Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Every few years, I like to do the same exact video, Introduction to Masking in Photoshop. There's a couple reasons why I do this same video every few years. First of all, with each new release of Photoshop, it often changes cosmetically just a little bit. And after a few years, those cosmetic changes can be significant enough where if someone is watching one of those older videos, they'll find it hard to follow along. Secondly, after a video's on YouTube for a while, it often doesn't show up in searches quite as often, so it's a little more difficult for people to find the video. Hence, I like to redo this video specifically every few years because it's a very popular video and it's basic to one's understanding of Photoshop. It's like masking 101. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take three different images. One of the images is of a park bench with my son Joe sitting to the extreme right. The second image is of that same park bench, but this time my son Joe is sitting to the extreme left. And the third and final image is my son Joe sitting directly in the middle of the park bench. What we're going to do is we're going to take all three of these images into Photoshop, stack them, then use masks so that we have a single image with that park bench and my son Joe sitting in all three positions. Now you could download all three of these files in the description below this video. I'll have a link to them. You could download them for free and work along at home. So let's get started. Let's open up Photoshop. Now, Photoshop has different workspaces. Uh, sometimes one workspace will be more conducive to a specific workflow than another workspace. So that your Photoshop looks like my Photoshop and it's a little easier for you to follow along at home, you may want to switch to the workspace that I use. I use the photography workspace. To get to it, go up to window, down to workspace, then over and down to photography. Just make sure that has a check mark next to it. And when you do that, you'll have Photoshop open and ready to roll. Now we need to open these three images into Photoshop and we're going to do it in a very specific way. We're going to open them so that one is on top of the other and that they're aligned. To do that, go up to file, down to scripts, then down to load files into stack. Click on that and you'll get the load layers dialog box. And from here, we could browse to where they are on our computer and load them into a stack in Photoshop. Click on browse. And when you do that, if you have a Mac, a finder window opens up, a Windows file explorer opens up if you have a PC and choose the files. If you download my files for free, they're going to have these names. Just click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one so that you have all three selected, and then click open. Then they'll be in this area here. Now you have a couple options. The first option is to attempt to automatically align source images. Now I did use a tripod for each of the shots, but sometimes there's micro movements of the tripod and one shot might be just slightly different than the other. So click that box so that Photoshop will automatically align them. The other option is to create a smart object after loading layers. You do not have to do that, so do not click that box and just click OK. And what will happen is Photoshop will open all three images, stack one on top of the other, and then have them aligned. Now what you'll notice is that one layer on top of another layer will totally obscure the lower layer. So right now this top layer is of my son Joe sitting directly in the middle. If I turn that layer off by clicking on the little eyeball, the middle layer is my son Joe sitting at the extreme left, and then that bottom layer is Joe sitting to the extreme right. What we're going to do is we're going to use masks. Masks allow you to kind of poke a hole in a layer so that you could see the layer below it. And we're going to work from the bottom up. So I have the top two layers off at the moment, and we're seeing the bottom layer, Joe sitting to the extreme right. Now again, as soon as I turn on that middle layer, it totally obscures that bottom layer so that we can't see Joe sitting to the extreme right. But what we can do is we could put a mask on this middle layer and poke a hole in that mask so we see the bottom layer. Now to do that, go over here to the extreme right and click on this little masking icon. It's a little rectangle with a circle on it and you could see you added a mask. And by default, you'll add a white mask. A white mask does nothing for us. What we need to do is poke that hole. And to poke that hole, we're going to use a brush. So hit the B key on your keyboard to get a brush. 
and it's over here on the tool well, it's this right here, this brush. What we want to do is we need to paint in black. Painting white on white on a white mask does nothing. So we need to paint in black. So what over here, if you go over here to the left tool well again, you'll notice we have some swatches. And if you're clicked on the mask, make sure you're clicked on it because you can click on the layer itself. We don't want that. We want to click on the mask. If you clicked on the mask, you'll have a white and black swatch. What we need is that black swatch in the foreground. You could click this little kind of double arrow there, or you could hit the X key on your keyboard. The X key will flip-flop those two swatches. By the way, I have keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop, like an entire list available that you could download for free. I'll have a link to them in the description below this video as well. So we have a brush and we're going to be painting in black. Now we go up to the top, we could see some brush settings. If we go right here, you could see that we have hardness all the way up. We could soften it just a little bit, it doesn't matter. You have different brushes to choose from. Typically you'll have this round brush and you could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. The right bracket key will make the brush larger, the left bracket key smaller, and we could get a relatively large brush. And we know, if I turn off that middle layer again, we know Joe is at the extreme right of this uh, bottom layer. So we'll turn on that middle layer again, make sure we're clicked on the mask, then paint right on the image with the brush. And since we're painting in black on the mask, we're painting in that part of the bottom layer. And that part of the bottom layer is my son Joe. when He was like, I don't know, 15, which is like, 12 years ago, uh, we're painting him in. So now we have two Joes in the image and we're just going to do that just like that. And you can see how it looks like now we have two Joes in the shot. Now we need to get that third Joe, the Joe in the middle in this shot. To do that, we're going to turn on that layer. And again, it will totally cover up the two layers below it. Click on that layer so it's the active layer. Add a mask to it. We have our brush ready to go. If you don't, just hit the B key again. Make sure you're painting in black. And then we know that Joe is on the left and the right of this bench. We just need to paint in those areas to poke the hole through this top mask so those bottom two layers will come through. Start on the right. Paint here. Get them in there. Just go very carefully so we don't like make a mistake. Paint too far one way or the other, or we leave out a part of his body or something like that. And then you're on one of those, come a, a meme, a Photoshop meme where someone is missing an arm or something like that. So we have the Joe in the middle and the Joe on the far right. Now we'll do the Joe on the left. One thing to be careful about is if uh, this was a cloudy day, but if someone is casting a shadow, you have to make sure you have the shadows as well. So just be aware of shadows and other things you might not think of quite, uh, quite as readily. Let me try to examine this really closely. Make sure I got all of all three Joes in the shot. And I think I did. And that's it. That's how you get three Joes sitting on a park bench. Now, when you're done, you have a couple different ways you could save this. If you go up to File, and then you go, let's say, to Save As, uh, you'll have this dialog box at first where you could save it to the cloud. You probably don't want to do that. So you're going to click on your computer. And then you'll get a dialogue where you could save it to a specific area on your computer and you have some options. You could save it as a Photoshop file, large document format file, Photoshop PDF or TIFF. And you may be thinking, well, you know, what should I use? Well, use the Photoshop file because if you save it as a Photoshop file, you'll have all these layers intact. You also will have the layers intact if you save it as a TIFF. But I most often use the Photoshop PSD format. But maybe thinking, well, that Photoshop file, I can't like put that on Instagram or Facebook, or I can't, you know, it's is easily email that to someone. 
uh, because they won't be able to view it maybe. Well, in that case, you'll want to export the image. To do that, go up to File, and then down to Export, and then Export As. And then from this dialog box, at the top where it says Format, you'll have some various options once it finally does its thing. You'll have a PNG, JPEG, or a GIF. Uh, most often, you'll probably use a JPEG. You could choose your quality and the size, so you could resize it with this option and click export, and you could export a JPEG of this file um, anywhere on your system and then share it any way you like. One thing about JPEGs, keep in mind, is all these layer, all this layer information is lost. Uh, when you save it as a JPEG or you use any of those export options, you'll lose all these layers. If you want to preserve the layers, go up to File, Save As, go to your computer, and then choose either Photoshop or TIFF, one of those two will save all of those layers and you could come back in and work on it later if you want to. So that's it. That's how you use masking, masking 101 in Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.